My name is uh, Neil Fraser. I work at Google. Uh, the product I've been building is a graphical programming environment called Blockly. Uh, this presentation is actually not about Blockly. It's about uh, trying to build Blockly in SVG. However, that being said, I'll give you a quick demo of what Blockly is, uh, just so you understand the types of problems that we're having to deal with and having to solve. Uh, so Blockly is a text, uh, sorry, graphical programming language. And you can build uh, programs just by plugging blocks together. Uh, so if uh, your variable is greater than uh, some value, then we will set the value. If you've seen Scratch, it's similar to 0. and we will print, uh, raise print text, game over. It's pretty simple. And, uh, but behind the scenes, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so this is your program, but we can instantly convert it to uh, JavaScript. And there's the code we just wrote, or Dart, or Python, or any other thing that uh, you want to write a filter for. Uh, it's available um, as it's open source. You can download it, you can play with it. I've been really weirded out by the things that some people have been using it for. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just heard recently that somebody's using it to automate heavy machinery in a factory. And when I heard that, I was thinking, that's nice. I would rather you didn't do that just now, but. Uh. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's an awesome little program. Uh, it's done entirely using SVG. Uh, the, uh, so the boundary of SVG does not include the tabs. It's everything in this box here, including the scroll bars and the trash can, which works. Um, oh, I forgot to put up sound. Yeah, and you've got nice little clicking noises when you put everything together, which is very satisfying. OK. Um, so Blockly was uh, is a great project to, uh, to work on. This is Google, so we need to be able to scale. That's pretty much the first thing you have to think about when starting a project at Google. And this, could, this program, simple as it is, could have been written in any number of different technologies. But we were interested in something that uh, you could Maybe not write the Linux kernel in, but something heavy duty. Um, we didn't want to put an artificial limit of, oh, you've reached 1,000 blocks. Game over. So uh, the very first thing we did was um, create this demo, which is, uh, if I recall correctly, that's 1,000 blocks. Um, and we wanted to be able to move a block. Essentially, you click down on a block, and you start dragging it around. And it needs to be fast. Uh, so this is running in Chrome. Uh, Firefox is not as fast, but it was OK. Uh, Opera, again, a little bit slower, but still quite acceptable. Um, and when we saw this, we knew that SVG could handle the demands. Um, we also recreated this entire demo in um, using Canvas. And of course, with Canvas, as soon as you draw on the canvas, the ink sinks into the screen, and you can never move it again. Uh, and you basically have to repaint everything. And the basic, uh, there's so much stuff here that if you have to repaint the world, it's not going to work. It's not going to scale. And with Canvas, the only way to deal, deal with that was basically to go way back to the 80s and start clipping out frames. And, but we don't want to do that. Um, Having a, an object you could move and having uh, it not have to redraw the background was awesome. So we chose SVG. Oh, that was a dumb move, because then we discovered <laughs> we need to be able to scroll the frame. Now, we thought about that. Yeah, scrolling the frame, that's no, problem, no big deal. Um, you can take a huge web page, megabytes and megabytes on a web page, and scroll it really fast. Scrolling is not a problem. It's a solved problem uh, you, because you just have you render it big and then you translate it. And SVG has got a translate op, um, 
uh, parameter, no problem, until we tried it. So what you're seeing here is the page bouncing up and down, scrolling um, sinusoidally. And it's fairly clear that we are redrawing the world. And redrawing the world is not a winning solution. Um, that this, if we'd known about this earlier, we might not have picked SVG. Um, but at this point, we were stuck, so we tried to solve the problem. Uh, it turns out that Safari has awesome performance on this test. And the reason is that it's effective. Um, each one of these objects has got uh, a Gaussian blur around it so that we can get embossed highlighting and a shadow and all that stuff. Looks great. In Safari, uh, now this change, this is one of the reasons why the, uh, this, tech, uh, this talk has been uh, challenging because every few weeks a new browser comes out, new browser version, and Everything that I had prepared <laughs> doesn't apply anymore. So uh, if you read the abstract, which was submitted a few months ago, about 80% of that is now wrong. Um, so here's uh, a simulation of what Safari used to look like. <laughs> uh, basically, the reason Safari got its performance is that it did not support any of the filters. So you can see that these things don't have any drop shadows. They've got no highlighting, no, nothing like that. Um, they do now, so this no longer works properly in Safari. Um, there was another problem uh, with, so essentially the problem with the previous slide was we're redrawing the world, we can't fix that. But what we can fix is make the world easier to redraw. Uh, and since the culprit is very definitely the shading, we have to change the shading. There's another problem with the shading. Not only is it slow, it is wildly inconsistent. This is the same SVG code in four different browsers. So uh, Chrome, pretty good. Um, you can see it's miss, uh, I'm measuring the size of this block and it's getting it slightly wrong and so there's white space. And, uh, Firefox is awesome, except it's all washed out. Uh, Safari doesn't even care. Um, <laughs> And Opera, as usual, is just awesome. So, um, so not only does our Gaussian blur for the drop shadow and the highlighting, it's slow, but it's also wildly inconsistent. And sometimes it's not even present. Uh, so that obviously had to go. And the solution was to get rid of all the Gaussian blurs and draw it manually. So we've got manual highlighting. This is a line that goes around, up and down. Now remember, these are dynamically generated blocks. So that's about two weeks worth of code <laughs> just to get the, the line around it properly. Um, oh yeah, another little detail. Uh, we have to support 40 languages. And two of them are problematic. Can you guess which two? No, not German. German's easy. Hebrew, Hebrew. Hebrew and Hold on. Arabic. Right to left. Now, computers, uh, the standard is that the light source is in the upper uh, left-hand corner. If we mirror this, uh, that's transform, translate, minus, or scale, minus one, zero, uh, awesome, boom. We've got all the shapes perfectly for Arabic and Hebrew. <laughs> Except the, uh, uh, the highlighting is now in this direction. And surprise, in Arabic and Hebrew UIs, the highlighting remains at the left. So we had to manually redraw all these highlights now up this side and across the top. Yeah, that was a fun week, a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, so basically, the biggest problem that we encountered right at the beginning was that um, uh, the Gaussian blurs were just terrible, both at performance and consistency. And we had to get rid of them all, uh, which is ironic because Gaussian blurs were one of the things we saw first uh, when evaluating SVG. And we saw, oh, that looks awesome. 
Oh, well, that's life. Um, the other next big problem that we had was uh, regressions. If you get something to work right, just wait 10 minutes. And another browser will pop out, and bad things happen. Uh, hey, let's try this one. This is a live demo. Uh, OK, so uh, let's create a uh, uh, repeat block and get uh, a comment. That used to work. <laughs> now it's bug number, uh, don't have it on me, but yeah. <laughs> It's a uh, null pointer exception. Uh, noon bug. They'll fix it sometime. Um, at least it didn't take out my operating system. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> uh, regressions happen all the time in a way that you, you're not used to if you're just doing regular uh, development. Um, SVG is so close to the bleeding edge that every browser release gives you a surprise. Um, another one is, uh, oh yes, we all, we all remember this wonderful demo, how beautifully it worked. Uh, this is even, this is with Gaussian Blur. Um, and we checked it in all different browsers and it all worked great. Well, let me switch to Firefox. I'll switch out of this so that the computer is no longer processing that. And then switch to Firefox and then try the same demo. So at some point within the past few months, Firefox went from being almost as fast as what you just saw <laughs> Seriously, guys? <laughs> I'm yeah. Um, we don't care anymore because we're not using Gaussian blurs, but uh, now you're clearly redrawing the universe when you're moving one block. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, Opera uh, is not immune from regressions. Um, just trying to get this page out. Hey, here we go. Uh, so here's Opera 11 point, uh, whatever the latest version of Opera 11 was. Um, works great. Um, now, see if you can see, spot the regression between this screenshot and Opera 12.0. So there's 11. Here's 12.0. On load. <laughs> I sent in this bug, and there was really no workaround. Um, and the next week, um, Opera 12.0. Point one came out, and it fixed this. So that's why the current version is a 0 0.1. Um, that's my fault, sorry. <laughs> uh, I will have to say, though, Opera's speed at fixing bugs, insanely good. <laughs> uh, this is not the first time I've complained about a bug in Opera, and almost immediately there's been an update. Um, really, really impressive. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we've had uh, unexpected redrawing of the entire world. Uh, we've had uh, spontaneous regressions. There's a whole bunch of missing features in, block, uh, sorry, in um, uh, SVG that bring you way back to 1985. Uh, and it's, it's really like programming in Quick Basic all over again. Uh, wrapped text. Has anybody wanted wrapped text in SVG? Yeah, it's so obvious. I mean, I don't even have to say anything more about that. How about aligned text? Well, aligned to the left is actually not too bad. You print out some text, and then you increment your start location and print out some more text. It's yicky, but eh, it works. What about alignment to the right? Well, now you have to create all your pieces of text, measure each one, find out what the length is, then iterate through it again, lining them all up. Um, oh yeah, and Firefox makes it even more fun because if you create some text and measure it, it will say that the length is not a number because you actually have to stick it on the page, then measure it, then move it. Um, that was fun. But alignment to the right, that's 
not something as common as wrap text. Unless, of course, you care about Arabic and Hebrew. Uh, I don't have Arabic and Hebrew letters on here, but you can see there's the menu. And everything is mirrored right to left, and everything has to be aligned to the right. Uh, all the context menus, same thing, and so on. Um, if you're going to do any Arabic and Hebrew, and you don't have alignment, that's a problem. Um, Tooltips? That had to be created using 200 lines of code, and it still got bugs. Um, mm? Yes, title does not work in SVG uh, last time I tested it. Of course, that was several months ago, so... Um, but yes, uh, title, actually, this is an HTML page, so that is title, and it works great in HTML, but seriously, that would be a really easy thing to add to SVG. Um, and you have to add the, um, add the event handlers, remove the event handlers, allow the mouse to move a little bit, but not too far, and so on. And the other one is, if you're going to create an advanced application that people can use, you need scroll bars. There are very few applications out there that don't have scroll bars. Uh, scroll bars are hard in SVG. Um, basically, you don't get them. You have to create the scroll bar from scratch, out of elements. Uh, and that's really bad because Hey, remember the Macs just flipped the directions of scroll bars? So now you have one application where the scroll bar is in this direction, but the host application works in another direction. Um, you also have applications that don't look the way the host environment looks and don't behave like it. Um, like, I don't have arrows here, but on Windows you should. So these are the four really m big missing pieces that we found uh, while developing Blockly. Um, there are workarounds, but they are really quite nasty. And now the good news. There's been a rising tide over the past few uh, months, past year really, um, that goes hand in hand with the regressions. Um, one set of things that SVG doesn't have are any form elements. And not having these is pretty brutal. Um, OK, you adding, creating checkboxes in SVG, not too hard. Same thing with radio buttons. Um, but scrolling menus, multi-select, uh, drop-downs, and then <laughs> good luck with this one. Uh, <laughs> this one in particular, just not going to happen in SVG. Um, where's your cut, copy, paste? and so on, undo. Um, no matter how much code you throw at the problem, you're not going to be able to create a text box in SVG. Uh, there's just a not, not enough API uh, to hit that. This was a major problem for us um, because we've got a lot of UI controls that we need. Uh, some of them we re-implemented, but then finally, um, we got some help for an object started to become usable. When we started, for an object didn't really work. You put radio buttons uh, on top of an SVG element, and in Firefox, works great. Awesome. Safari, doesn't really matter what you do, the SVG always comes in front of the for an object elements, which is wonderful. There's a checkbox, or there are radio buttons under there, and they're fully functional, but you can't see them. Chrome decided to be the best of both worlds, so you can see the uh, radio buttons, <laughs> but the mouse click is captured by the red square, so nothing happens. <laughs> um, fortunately, all three of those are fixed, and for an object can now be used for embedding uh, form elements. Um, and now you can actually do some cool stuff. Uh, there's one uh, exception, unfortunately, and that is Opera, screenshot from Opera. Opera is the most honest browser in the world when it doesn't understand what, what to do with a foreign object. It gives you a big red cross saying, yeah, got it, not doing it. <laughs> um, 
if we could get uh, foreign objects working in Opera, then we could start putting a lot more UI in there. Um, that said, I'm actually really glad that foreign object did not work for the majority of Blockly's development because, uh, let me see, let me go to demos and maze. Uh, this is an awesome little uh, program. You, uh, you've got a move forward block, you hit run and it moves forwards and you can do fun things like uh, put in uh, if uh, there's a wall ahead, then, or if there is not a wall ahead, uh, then move forwards and so on. What about else if and else? We actually have a lot of functionality in here that we want to be able to create. We want if, else if, else if, else if, else, you need to be able to put in only one else, multiple else ifs, you need to be able to revert, change the orders of them and so on. I mocked out the UI that would be required to do this. And it looked like the bridge of the Starship Enterprise with drop downs and buttons and knobs and all sorts of things. And then we found that we couldn't use foreign object. Um, and that was a really scary moment when we realized we couldn't use standard UI widgets. And Fortunately, that happened because then we discovered an alternative. Um, in Blockly, we've been training users to pull blocks out of menus and pull, push them together. So if we, um, uh, let's see, put an else if in here, put an else down here, we can pull stuff out. So this turned out to be really useful to not be able to put a foreign object uh, element in there and then standard controls. It forced us to think outside the box, which was good. But in general, being able to have standard UI widgets would be a really good thing. Uh, these scroll bars, by the way, are completely fake. Uh, <laughs> um, and lastly, we've been talking a lot about um, a certain set of browsers. Um, but there's one browser that we've not mentioned yet. Um, is anybody here from Microsoft? <laughs> OK. Well, um, <laughs> last year's SVG conference turned, uh, was hosted by Microsoft, and it turned into a real pummeling for them. Um, I'm actually not going to do that. Uh, I have no real opinion on IE, um, basically because I haven't been able to use it. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, Google had a security incident, um, and as a result, uh, a certain operating system is really hard to come by. So I haven't really been able to test much on a browser that only works on one operating system. Um, the exception, though, is that uh, we did manage to find a Windows computer at Google. Um, it's the photo booth. <laughs> and we found that we can, you see, it's got a network connection, which security doesn't know about. <laughs> if you pull this plug out and push it back in again, and then run in here and interrupt the boot up sequence, <laughs> you can now run IE. <laughs> Um, however, it's really hard to debug, given that there's no keyboard and you have to bring up a key map. And, um, so that's why I really have no opinion of IE, because we haven't tested it. Uh, the rest of the browsers, though, it's been um, quite pleasant for the most part. Uh, and I've been really quite happy with how things have gone. Um, questions? Hi. Did um, so I've been following Blockly since it since it came out, but didn't it start uh, in Java? wasn't Wasn't it programmed in Java at one point? It was. Um, yeah, this, that was called uh, uh, App Inventor. Uh, it was a quick demo that somebody put together. Um, we we found a uh, Java based web uh, Java based block toolkit. We found a um, scheme to. Java compiler, 
and a bunch of other bits and pieces that we got from the web, uh, put it all together, wrapped it up in bailing wire and duct tape, and did a demo of it. And some manager at Google said, that's awesome. Ship it. Uh, <laughs> so there wasn't a big refactoring effort to get it on JavaScript and SVG? This is the big refactoring effort. No, but I mean, uh, did, did you do it from scratch? Or would yes. You, oh, OK. Got yes. Um, so quick question. So in terms of testing, how do you deal with all those regressions? Um, I mean, like, what do you do for, for a testing framework? Do manual, point and click, or I mean, do, what do you have? Uh, this is Blockly. We do block uh, testing the Blockly fashion uh, tests. Uh, Yes, leave page. That was because too many people lost their mazes. Uh, all right. So I don't have a lot of screen real estate, but um, it's loading the. Basically, we do unit tests in Blockly unit tests in Blockly, uh, which makes it so much more fun. And the number of unit tests exploded by an order of magnitude as soon as we could write our unit tests in Blockly. Uh, so yes, we created uh, new blocks for specifically for unit tests. Um, and here it is, uh, repeat while false. Um, and then if it executes in here, it fails, and so on. Um, so this doesn't, remember, Blockly is not a language. It's a programming environment. Uh, so you can then generate the JavaScript and run that. Java run the uh, Dart, run the Python, and you get to test all the languages all at once. This does not hit the UI issues. Um, in order to you properly automate that, there are tools for it, but it's a real pain in the neck to try to verify that something showed up visually on screen and didn't have a red X through it. Yeah, uh, there's Selenium and a few other things, but even they are tricky. Thanks. So maybe I missed it, but uh, what is the actual, uh, let's say, the, the native uh, way that you that you store the the Blockly code? Is that the XML one? Uh, it exports to XML, a format it can also import from. Um, XML is kind of verbose. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Nope. Uh, <laughs> I meaning, didn't design that format. <laughs> meaning, I can I can see a lot of, of of useful of people who could use it just as a as an engine to to change JavaScript into Dart into Python and back. So oh, is it, that su you, you separately can't available? Load, yeah, you can't round trip to JavaScript and then back into Blockly. Um, ah. you, it can't read JavaScript. Uh, it, it's designed for a more limited environment. And as soon as you write a closure, okay, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Hello. Um, for the the problems you had with the right aligned text. Yes. Was, was that m manually line broken text? Uh, in this case, uh, yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, so it's something like a context menu. Okay. Uh, but you had use. problems with that. So if 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 you had so this was for RTL text, was it? Uh, Yes, that's right. Specifically for RTL text, if you've got, say, a context menu with a bunch of items on it, you want it all to be aligned to the right side. Okay. Uh, so and that means you have to measure everything, find the longest one, reorder it, and so on. So I, I'm pretty sure using text anchor start, um, but you have to also set direction RTL, and that changes how the text anchor gets interpreted, whether start means left or right. I will so, look into so, that. So you Just might like to, to give that a go. Thanks. Um, Te text anchor and yeah, the text text direction and anchoring is certainly with byte eye text is is kind of iffy. But if it's a single direction RTL, right. I think that's pretty well. Okay, I'll, I'll check that one out. Thanks. Um, and for the the scroll bars, I guess you could use some foreign objects, set them to have like divs of a certain size yes, and then put more SVGs inside that. That's what this scroll bar, yeah, that's what this scroll bar is. It's a, uh, it's a div inside a div and the usual way you fake scroll bars. Um, problem is that fails utterly on Macs. Uh, modern Macs have scroll bars hidden unless you're busy scrolling and suddenly they no longer show up, uh, which is why I had to use my computer. <laughs> 
for this demo, or else that scroll bar vanishes, as well as every other scroll bar, until I start scrolling around. Uh, plug in a mouse, and it may appear. Uh, it's, yeah, it's unfortunate that that hack no longer works. I used to use that hack. So did you, um, did you actually try to do it the other way around? So have an HTML document and embed everything, SVG, the SVG elements into this HTML document? Uh, so right now you're faking everything and, uh, by creating one SVG root and right. put everything into the SVG element. Did you try to do it the opposite way? Uh, so that would mean that every um, every block would be a separate SVG item. Not necessarily. Yeah, but yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, yes. So, well, um, I've got you have one SVG root, and then. So I've got. The problem is this stuff, stuff nested and stuff nested and stuff. So it, that may give you one layer, but um, I've got a lot of layers going on here. OK, so I was wondering about the performance tests, uh, if they're available anywhere, and if you sent them already to the different browsers. I have not sent, no, I have not sent a performance test because Blockly has been evolving fairly quickly. Um, but yes, once we stabilize, I'm definitely going to do that. I think that will be really useful. Yeah, great. Last one. <laughs> I'll try to be quick. So, um, if someone else who's written uh, an applica a sophisticated application in SVG and had to more deal with scrolling performance, like you definitely just want to take your entire SVG canvas, put it inside an, a, a div, and just scroll that around. Now, that's how you get on the fast track of like accelerated scrolling and everything goes quick, right? Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, the catch is that I need to be able to have scroll bars in a lot of different places in my application. For instance, right here, there's a scroll bar, there is another scroll bar. And there are more scroll bars elsewhere in the in the application, um, and suddenly you're, yeah. It, it there are too many different places where I need scroll bars and need control over that sort of thing. That's, that's, I'd like to talk to you some more about that. And the other sure. thing is, um, so yeah, writing uh, text kind of sucks in SVG unless you actually want to write your own rich text editor from scratch. And which, by the way, it's way better than HTML. So just you know, SVG is actually good at that part. So until you hit want to hit the clipboard, uh, we solved that one. So. 